All right, my friends, it's that time of year when we decide who are the most improved wrestlers in 2022. Straight away, you're being like, why do you get to decide this, you bald idiot? Well, I didn't. Me and what culture sat down and we basically did it as a committee. And you think, oh, well, why do any of you get to decide? That's just how YouTube works. But mostly this is just a way to take 10 superstars and make sure we shout their names to the rooftops because they have had a great 12 months. Hello, my name is Simon for What Culture. Please hit that subscribe button. I've already said it, but I'll say it again. These are the 10 most improved wrestlers of 2022. Number 10, Dominic Mysterio. What a surprise this has been, eh? Now, I've always quite liked Dominic Mysterio ever since he had his debut match with Seth Rollins way back when. But in 2022, he has made this year his own. Because ever since turning on Daddy Ray, he just gets it so much more. I mean, who knew that him being a sniffling piece of shit would just make you go, <laughs> I hate this guy. And every single time he gets in the ring, everybody just goes, boo. But given that is his whole job, you've got to say more power to that guy. And his in-ring has definitely got better as the weeks and months have gone by too. So eventually, if he can take all of this and put it together in one big package... He's going to be absolutely tremendous. Because wrestling is more about just doing one thing well. You have to master many. And we cannot let it escape us that his relationship with Rhea Ripley has been one of the highlights of the entire damn year. I mean, I never saw that coming. It wasn't on my bingo card. Now I'm super pumped to see what he's going to do in 2023. Number nine, Cora Jade. I swear people just forget what NXT is. I mean, out of all the promotions in the entire world, that is the one where you should sit down and go, well, there's probably going to be some ups and some downs, because this is quite literally brand new wrestlers learning their craft on television. This is why when people used to go after Cora Jade, I would facepalm a little bit, because she's only 21 years old and has been showing potential for ages. And then during the last 12 months, she turned heel, and all of a sudden that light bulb went off, and she started to improve. Getting rid of the skater gimmick definitely helped and beating the crap out of Roxanne Perez and doing that feud was also a benefit. And much like our pal Dom, every time you see her in the ring, she just seems a little bit better than she was last time. And what more can you ask? If this continues as well, I tell you, she will be the NXT Women's Champion within the next 12 months. And if somebody comes up with a good idea and a good story, I think she will be prepared that she can go on Raw or SmackDown. Now, of course, you always have to take these things delicately, but Cora Jade absolutely has it, and I will support her till the end. Don't know what the end means, but I guess we'll find out. Number eight, Angelo Dawkins. I mean, this guy. As usual, everyone did their whole, well, I wonder who's going to be the Marty Janetti of the Street Profits, which, by the way, is offensive and massively unfair. And I don't know whether Angelo Dawkins heard this or not. He was like, oh, yeah, I'll show you what I'm going to do. My word, did he improve. I mean, it's not like he was bad before, but he got so much better you couldn't help but notice. And given the fact that tag team partner Montez Ford was out with injury quite a lot throughout 2022, he just had bangers with everyone, especially with that match with Seth Rollins. It was great. Plus, honestly, his hot tag, man. It will put hair on your chest. I don't know what that means. It also helped the Profits overall as a team. And when it is time to split them up, you don't have to focus on one and not the other. You can push Montez forward and you can absolutely push Angelo Dawkins. And given how he does speak when somebody gives him a microphone, I actually think he could be a damn good heel. So he just has a huge upside that WWE can utilize. And I'm genuinely excited about this. Goes to show when you put in the work, you will get the rewards. I love Angelo Dawkins. Number seven, Jade Cargill. People like to give Jade Cargill shib, totally forgetting, as we've already talked about, that wrestling is made up of many different little parts. And of course you want to be good at all of them, but look at Jade. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me if you ran a wrestling promotion and Cargill walked in, you'd be like, man, I'm not interested in her. Of course you would be. Some things are just a slam dunk. A bigger reason for that, though, is that over 2022, she has improved in all areas. She totally gets her character more now. The presence she has is unreal. And she had a bunch of good matches because AEW went, well, why don't we play to her strengths? Which was quite literally her being really strong and just squashing people in a few minutes. Given she's only been doing this for two years, Jade is well on her way to dominate the industry. I don't know when her contract is up, but I tell you this. Everybody is one of going to sign her to the point I got my sentence structure wrong. But she is going to be one hell of a hot free agent. It's probably only going to get better from here. Number six, the guns. Sure. Okay, we'll talk about it. 
Austin and Colton probably have their position in AEW because their father is daddy ass. But does that mean they have sat around and rested on their laurels? Absolutely not. They are putting the effort in and I think they've just smashed it. It really did feel like 2002 was the time they found their place because not only were they doing goofy stuff like saying we're not the ass boys as they argued with Danhausen, but they also had some great matches against the acclaimed and FTR. So now they're doing a little bit of everything. They also know how to get booed out of the building and generate so much heat, which again means they're doing something right. And once again, we just forget how young some of these guys are. They're basically fetuses, so the more experience they do get, you will see them climb up that ladder. It's also gotten to the point where I just look forward to seeing them on TV now. And honestly, those shib eating grins they have, you just want to see them get knocked out so i'm gonna give a round of applause for the gun club i think they've got a bright future number five tiffany stratton nobody else in the nxt women's division has progressed as much as tiffany stratton i mean she only had her first match about a year ago and then in 2022 she was having bangers against the likes of roxanne perez and wendy chu and then very unfortunately in that last one, she went and got injured. So we haven't seen her since then, but she still gets into this list because I think when we do get to 2023 and she does make her big return, if we push her in the right way, well, this is another one, she's definitely going to be on Raw and Smackdown before December. She's also only 23 years old, so she has so much potential still to tap into. If WWE takes their time with this and they give her the right character and they give her the right story and they give her the right jump up, to the main roster, I actually think she could fly higher than even we're expecting. She's got what it takes. So she is definitely one to keep an eye on because she's one of these people that just takes to wrestling like a duck to water. Makes me sad. I'm not very good at this. Number four, Ridge Holland. So Ridge Holland has had a tough year because of course he was the person involved in that overhead belly to belly suplex when Big E landed on his head and broke his neck. But thankfully, after the fact, Big E has come out and said, look, these things happen. There's no hard feelings. And Holland almost took that on his shoulders to say, okay, well, I've got to give something back to the wrestling business. He became really damn good. Clearly benefiting from being booked alongside the brawling brutes, he has gone into every single match and always held his own, especially in the main event of Survivor Series when he was in war games. I mean, there were some of the best wrestlers on the planet in that ring. He's like, oh yeah, I'll go toe to toe with you. And he did. It's also quite incredible because he is the bruiser of his group, even though Pete Dunne and Sheamus are in that thing. And given how he looks and given how he talks and given how he walks, this is another guy that I think would benefit from separating from the brawling brutes and going on a bit of a heel run. I think there could be something there. So now we have basically learned that whatever WWE saw in the former rugby player is finally coming to fruition. And of course, I'm a little bit more excited about this one because he's from the UK. That's just how stupid brains work. Number three, powerhouse hobs. I like wrestling when it is big meaty men slapping man meat. You could argue that no one is doing a better job of that right now than powerhouse Will Hobbs. Because not only has his in-ring come on lows, but he has found his voice, he has found his character, and he just seems so much more confident to the point when we get to 2023, he should be winning his first AEW title. And if he doesn't, something's gone horribly, horribly wrong. This past year is also when he broke out as a single star when he separated from Team Taz. And even though that feud with Ricky Starks didn't go the way I wanted, they still had two incredible matches that made me like both guys even more, which obviously includes Willie. I mean, even though Hobbs lost round two, he still looks like he could kill you by just giving you a glance. That's why I want to see more of this in the new year. In fact, we could probably put him in a massive feud after Wardlow and Samoa Joe are done fighting over the TNT title. And like I say, I'd strap that thing around him and I'd have him held it for about a year. I'm not even kidding. I think that would rock. If this trajectory continues as well, by 2024, he will be ready for the AEW World Championship. And you may be going, Simon, you're exaggerating here. That's hyperbole. But I don't think that's correct at all. Powerhouse is going to do it. Number two, Sola Sakoa. My word, do I like Sola Sakoa. I mean, he debuted on the main roster by screwing over Drew McIntyre in his fake hometown in front of kind of hometown fans. 
And he hasn't missed a beat since then. No matter what you give him, he just shrugs his shoulders and goes, yeah, I can do that. And he kills it. He also fits into the bloodline perfectly, which is even more incredible, because he's the dude that comes across as the craziest of them all, even though he's surrounded by Roman Reigns and the Usos. I mean, that doesn't just happen, you have to get it. And also in 2022, he had some great matches against the likes of Drew and Ricochet. And all we need to do is keep this up in 2023 and that guy is gonna fly like even if wwe pulled a fast one and went oh my gosh and it was solo sokoa that beat roman reigns for the world championships i'd be like yeah cool i get it do it again so we absolutely have a star in the making here folks and he's just gonna get better over the next few months to the point when we get to the end of the 2023 and we do the lists he'll probably be in like 10 best wrestlers or something can totally see it. Number one, the acclaimed. These two just make me happy. I mean, as soon as Tony Khan put them together, I was saying on ups and downs, <laughs> I tell you, I think we've got something here. And then we got to 2022, and as the acclaimed would say, they arrived. It's why Max Caster and Anthony Bowens go into this number one slot as a pair, because what didn't they improve on? Their promos got better, their matches got better, their character got better. Every single thing they were doing got better, and they had some great feuds, especially their matches with FTR and Swerve in their glory. I mean, they should be in everybody's matches of the year list. I mean, they gathered so much momentum, we had no choice but to turn them babyface, and they also embraced the goofy side of sports entertainment when they started scissoring. Like, if you explain that to someone, it sounds like it's nonsense, but when you see it in person, my word, it could be perfect. It was such a success that even Billy Gunn experienced a career rebirth as he became a massive star, and I would ensure they hold the AEW tag team titles for loads of 2023, and I tell you, whoever beats them is gonna be hated for days. So Flair play all round two, the acclaimed. I think they have done a wonderful job over the 12 months. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next. Now, of course, there'll be a bunch of people we didn't mention and we should have done, so make sure you put them in the comments so we get some honorable mentions. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles much like this one that I have just verbalized for you. Come follow us on social media at whatculture.wwe and I the 316. And there's a bunch of videos, some of which are end of year lists. See if you agree. My name is Simon Watt Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. If you are watching this at the proper time, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you for the support over 2022. And we'll keep seeing each other because YouTube never dies.